The Judy Garland Museum was founded 40 years ago by a local artist, Jackie Dingman. And the concept was, and still is, to promote and encourage local talent. We always have a, a talent contest of some kind. And so we honor stars from the past and encourage stars of the future. The Judy Garland Museum has the largest collection of Wizard of Oz and Judy Garland artifacts in the world. We have many, many original pieces from the film, with Winky Spear, watercolor set renderings, lobby cards. And we have the carriage that brought the main characters into the Emerald City. All this Hollywood memorabilia has grown in value dramatically in the last 10, 15 years. Judy Garland was born here in Grand Rapids, Minnesota on June 10, 1922 to Frank and Ethel Gum, G-U-M-M. -M. Uh, her dad ran the local movie theater and her mother accompanied the silent movies in those days on the piano, provided the music. Judy had two older sisters. Both of her parents and her sisters would get up on stage and perform between movies or as an extra added attraction. And from the time she was a year and a half old, they realized she could sing too in this very room at a piano in the corner behind me. Her father was sitting down and taught Judy and a little neighborhood girl, My Country Tis of Thee, uh, America, the song. And the other little girl kind of got it, but stumbled through it. Judy, one hearing, two hearing, zoom, a little piping voice. And it was like, baby gum is good. Here's the three girls, the three gumdrops who spent their formative years in this home. Mary Jane, ironically Dorothy Virginia, and Frances Ethel Gum, who became Judy Garland. And their mother made these outfits for their shows in this home. Now what you're seeing is a complete restoration based on photographs that were discovered, oral histories, courthouse records. Everything has been restored so it's as close as it possibly could look to when they lived here. The birch floors are original, the windows, the radiators, the front door, and the staircase. Now this, is, this was their natural stage where they would perform for the neighbors. The house was full of action, always. Her dad was a real showman and her mom ran up and down the steps singing songs. People love to come to the gum house. When she was four, the family moved to California to get away from the Minnesota winters, purportedly. That was part of it anyway. And her mother was kind of ambitious, kept the girls on stage in Southern California. By the time Judy was seven, she was in short sound movies with her sisters. They were doing hundreds of live shows in theaters up and down the West Coast. And everywhere they went, and the older she got, the more people fell down hearing this tiny little girl. Judy only ever got to be four foot 11, even as an adult. So this tiny little girl who had this huge voice, by the time she was 10, 11, 12, it was this rich, full sound. And when she started to be heard around Los Angeles, uh, by the time she was 13, she was under contract to MGM Studios. And they, in effect, developed her as a star in small supporting roles in movies and. 1937 and 38, and then in 1939, she did The Wizard of Oz. Really Someday I wish upon a star up where the clouds are far behind me, where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops, that's where you'll find me. That catapulted her. Top 10 box office Special Academy Award, uh, radio appearances, she made 
30 movies for MGM in the space of like 14 years. went the trolley, ding, 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 went the bell. Come lightning, come drizzle, come sleet, come cyclone, come earthquake, the people gotta eat. The ashes of the beaker and the sand away. During the filming of Wizard of Oz, there were probably nine pair of slippers. Some were used for the dance sequences. One pair was saved just for the special close-up shot. Only four pair have survived the film. We had one pair here on loan from a private collector in Los Angeles. The night that Hurricane Katrina hit land, it was a smash and grab robbery. They smashed the door here, came in, smashed the case, and they were out of here in less than 60 seconds. One sequin was found on the floor that had fallen off. We are about six miles west, southwest of Grand Rapids, Minnesota, at a iron mine pit that was closed a number of years ago that's uh, a deep pit where we believe, uh, due to our new information, that the ruby slippers are at the bottom of. And so we're checking that out today with divers, and uh, it's going to be a fun time. Our job here is just to really try to dispel the rumors as best we can. You know, there's been a big rumor since day one, since it happened in 2005, that the ruby slippers were discarded in this mine pit here. So we're going to look here and see what we find and do a real serious search for them. We have a group of, uh, I think, about six or seven divers now that are going to be going down here to try to do a serious recovery of the slippers. So what'd you find? I found a gauge for an ear. Um, uh, looks like reds. That's what that that is there, and a and a spoon from a fisherman. So, along with a lot of pop cans and beer cans. So, so you think it's down there? What's that? The slippers. Well, uh, that's what we're here for, though, right? <laughs> Being at the Judy Garland Wizard of Oz Festival here in Grand Rapids, I am amazed by the devotion of the fans that are here, um, which makes sense just because Judy gave so much, I think the fans appreciate that. Today was the first day I walked into the museum here. Walking into this museum, if you are a lover of the Wizard of Oz, if you are a lover of, of Judy Garland, if you're a lover of great popular entertainment, you walk through these doors, and I'm from New York City. We don't have anything like this. We wa I walked in here today and was just blown away by the sheer beauty and joy that is on every, in every corner of this museum. And uh, it's, it's a credit to Minnesota. It is a credit uh, to Judy, to the Wizard of Oz, that something like this is here. Sitting here in Judy Garland's house that she grew up in, the fact that this still stands, I think is, is such a, it's a treasure, it's a monument. And um, again, this is something that should be cherished and thankfully it is here. Judy Garland being born in Minnesota, I think it very much, it gave her a grounding in something of, of you know, the Midwest um, aesthetic. And that, of course, is what Judy Garland's appeal was uh, as, as a movie star. It was a persona that they 
put upon her, but they didn't have to really put it upon her. That, that's who Judy Garland was. Um, I think the fact that she came from, from this environment, no matter how high of a star she became, and she hit the highest of heights in stardom, I think the fact that deep down she was that girl from Minnesota, it very much, it, she is the quintessential American girl. I think the people are proud of her here. It just shows that, you know, you can come from anywhere and be a star and be a success. Judy remembered only happy times here. Uh, we have a transcript of her talking about Grand Rapids years later, and she said it was the only normal, carefree time my family ever had, it was in that little white house in Minnesota. Judy often said that you know, she might have been happier in her life if she'd never left Grand Rapids, if she'd never been put into that concrete mixer of Hollywood and Broadway and show business. Uh, she, she also said, uh, too, if movies had never happened, she'd still be one of the Gum Sisters in Grand Rapids. I think home is something she looked for. I think this is why she worked very, 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 very hard all of her life to try to find that kind of safe place and in the process she entertained and continues to entertain billions of people and now i want you to meet the winner of looks award for the best actress the best performance by an actress in 1954 and she's been my favorite girl ever since she came over the rainbow ladies and gentlemen the star of a star is born miss judy garland the best thing I can say to you about Judy Garland and her place in history is that Frank Sinatra once said, we will all be forgotten, but not Judy Garland. If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts, offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota. Explore hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for a great vacation or a place to hold an event. ExploreAlex.com. Tri-State Brain and Spine Institute. With locations in Alexandria, Edina, Crookston, and Maple Grove. Doctors dedicated to evaluating and treating all types of brain and spine problems, no matter how complex. 